So I'm now done with the idea of looking at us. We've spent a whole bunch of time defining who we are, what we are, what we do best, setting up how we are the best in the world at something, defining who our competitors are, looking at the comparison between us and our competitors. So if we're in that competitive situation, we know where we fit. Now it's time to turn the tables around. We're not looking out, or we become the customer looking back at us. So the question becomes, now that we know who we are, how do we make sure the customer sees us as we want to be seen? And we go through a, an exercise here that is a, uh, an exercise that I call features and benefits. In quick form, feature is what, is what I do. Benefits is what the customer gets. Okay? Because we're seeing so many more messages, it's important that the customer understands the messages that they're seeing much more rapidly, which means that we have to be very clear about talking about what the customer gets rather than what I do. So let's, um, let's, let's take a business. Okay, let's take a business of um, uh, print advertising. Okay, if I'm generating print advertising, what do I do? I write. Design. I design. Market. Market change. I sell. Those are things I do. Okay. The key with this is those are activities that I'm doing, and I may be the best at all of these things in the world, but does the customer care? The question is, what does the customer get? When I write something, what does the customer get? Informed. Very different, isn't it? Very different to talk about I write or you become informed. Because I want to become informed. I don't care if you write or not. If I design, what do you get? You get, I'm going to call it some sort of enjoyment of the art, right? Now, that's not great words in terms of customer speak, but it makes the transition between what I do and what you get. And so as we generate a view that the customer has of our product, we have to go through this exercise to say, how do we talk about to the customer what we what the customer gets. What are they going to end up with? If we go back to the production of concerts, what does the customer get? You produce a concert. 
What does the customer get? Entertained. No! Who's your customer again? Um. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> yes, the customer um, mm -hmm. gets, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it in a, a fairly simple world, a feel good situation. Mm -hmm. I was thinking one of the artists in your concert, okay, the artist is going to sing, okay? And what do you get when the customer sings? It's just pleasure. Yeah. Money. Right? Right? Okay. Again, this is different, right? What is your view of the customer? Who is your customer and what are they looking for? Okay? You also are probably going to get some satisfaction. Okay, you're going to get some personal satisfaction that you've made good choices. Mm -hmm. But if there's no money there, okay, and you don't have to like their singing. You don't have to enjoy it, do you? Okay, you have to have the satisfaction that you produced a good concert, and that's really what you get out of this. It could be for 12-year-olds, mm -hmm. right? Not your music style, not your thing, but you get the, the satisfaction that said that group of people loved what I produced. It really felt good to see all of those smiling faces out there, mm -hmm. right? So, we need to generate this list for each one of your businesses. What do you do? What's the translation of what the customer gets? Um, if I'm doing um, video for a select audience, which may be more than one of you, and we could probably do this as well as it being audio for select audience, and the customer is um, a TV channel like HBO. What I do is I select actors, select stories, um, research, um, themes. These are the things that I do to get to my very select audience. And I don't care what niche audience you may have. It may be gender-based, it may be um, culture-based, it may be language-based, it may be a whole bunch of things. But it is a select, small audience that I'm working with, and HBO is going to be there. What does HBO get in this thing? Um, From, pardon me? Um, they get a... Video. Wider audience. audience. Mm -hmm. And that translates to more money. Uh -huh. That's really what they're getting. For all of these things, HBO probably doesn't care what the theme is. They probably don't care that the actors are the authentic actors that really understand this part better. My son is deaf. He gets angry every time a hearing person gets the part of a deaf actor. Angry. He says, there are plenty of good deaf actors that can do this. Why do they have to put a hearing person in to do that deaf actor part? Well, they believe that they will get a wider audience by a famous hearing actor than they will be by a non-well-known deaf actor. And in the general scheme, it isn't going to make a difference. So if I'm trying to get hundreds of thousands of views, or, uh, views in HBO, that's what I'm going to do. 
If, however, I'm trying to get to this very select audience that gets angry every time you put a hearing actor in a deaf role, if I do this, if I select only deaf actors for that role, then I'm going to get to this audience that I would not have gotten to otherwise. That's what small business can do that big business can't. That's where our niches can be completely different than the big people. Because we can generate something for generally less money, more efficiently, probably less costly actors. So, yes? And sometimes, if, if you look at the trends of the, of the industry, sometimes when applying to your business in terms of uh, responding to that specific audience, right? Yes. Yes. Because, because I, as an audience member, I want to support the channels that support me, support my community, support my cultural values. That's who I want to support. And if I see an advertiser supporting the shows that supports who I want to see on the screen, that's money. That's something that works. And we have the ability as smaller companies to make those decisions and be much better in a competitor standpoint. Yeah, the other company, they're much bigger. They got a lot more money. That's their advantage. My advantage is I'm, I'm going to get to an audience that they can't reach because they don't know how. They don't know the stories. They don't know the things. Okay? Questions about that? Okay, so if we're, we're, we are now right smack in the middle of marketing. Marketing generally has four pieces to it. Product, price, promotion, and placement. It's called the four Ps. This is standard marketing kind of stuff. The product part is basically what we've done here. We're defining the product, but we're defining the product from the customer standpoint, right? We're trying to use words that gives me customer benefit. The last thing I'll leave you with in this is, in general, benefits to the customer fall in four categories. Those four categories are feel good, look good, make money, save money. That's the customer's viewpoint. If we look at wider audience for HBO, that's make money. Right? These two are generally much more important in business to business transactions although they can be important for a consumer, these two are generally much more important in business to customer interactions. So, um, for example, business to business means like for example, I create a video for a spa, and the business client is like for a wedding, a video for a wedding? Yes, yes. Um, actually, the video for the spa may actually be business to consumer also. When I'm talking about business to business, if I create a video for HBO to show, that's business to business, okay? Because the business is using this to, do, to sell to somebody else, to sell either a part of it or something else. In the spa circumstance, the video that you make for the spa may actually be something that the video uses 
with the customer and, and it doesn't really become a revenue generator. It becomes something to, to help the thing work better, okay? 